Okay. okay. As I was saying last time, <laughs> <laughs> that he is a great man, being very open-minded, and is he going about things that I used to ask him about his culture and particularly your family. At the moment, I remember, um, I don't know if you remember that or not, when we went to Chorea and we cooked some dinner-ish. <laughs> dinner-ish. Uh, yeah. Well, I can't really call it dinner, so because it was a mess. It was rice and beef stroganoff, yep. which is originating from Russia, and you didn't have any food left for you. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. And you said, and you said Oh, oh, that's okay. I have like ten kids in my. Fa- I'm one of ten kids in my family. I'm just to not. Have <laughs> and I felt so freaking sad. I could have died there. I could have gave you my food, but I didn't eat anything as well because I don't eat meat, right? But I'm like, people, <laughs> take a back and give this guy something. You know, I felt so bad. Oh my god, that was one of the worst. Moments. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I hope you're not. In such a bad situation right now. No, 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 no. That was that was funny. I forgot. About, I had forgot about that. And you know, I, I, I missed those. <laughs> you like I did it, but that was that. That was even though I didn't. Even though I was not able to taste a good bowl of beef stroganoff, I would not change that moment for anything in the world because that was the moment where I really got to meet you. I, I met. I had already met all of them before. Corba, Corba, Corba Jonathan, Lucas, all of them. But just that, that was one of those moments where I really got to meet you guys and really just relax and talk and we got to really understand each other. Like, moments like that were just priceless. Like, I'll, 10 years from now, I'll still be looking at moments like that and thinking, man, that was a priceless moment in my life. I'd, I wouldn't that trade that for anything. That was my moment of choice, you know, that Lucas didn't go because he felt like, I don't know, felt like not going because he didn't want to hang out with people. But then I went, even though I didn't know much of people, and I just came and, you know, I, I knew just a few people there, pretty barely. But then I met cool people as well. You know, remember the concerts we used to have with guitars? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think. You're talking about the ones in Choi or the one we went to at the, um, at the Twin Cities thing? Oh, both. Both then. <laughs> I remember the Twin Cities one because that's when I, um, yeah, I remember that one too. But she, I remember the ones I used to have in Choya, like those little, those little, like, w- little weird, um, like, kind of events. But which, which, which was cool, too. And now that I think about it, um, one thing is this a recurrent thing on this podcast is I always talk about kind of how, uh, the Brazilian culture influenced me a little bit. How did it affect, how did it affect you? Because when I was there, when we were going to college together, you know, all of us was hanging out with the Brazilians. All of us was partying, you know. We left with a lot of good friends. You left with a lot of good friends. One very oh. cute boyfriend. How did it affect? How did it? How did it kind of affect you, in your opinion? So we have a special attitude to Brazilians in this country, because we used to have and still have a lot of soap operas originating from Brazil. You know, Russia is still pretty cold, even though it's not colder than Chicago or Boston or not even colder than New York, I would say. But then um, we used to see all these people going to the beach right after their high school classes. And we're like, damn, I really want to be there, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to be the one not walking through the snow, but just like (laughs) walking on the beach. Right. (laughs) And they walked in their shoes in the house that was that felt like they're so I don't know that that felt that they're very rich, but here we don't do it just because they may be wet and it's just, <laughs> like that, you know. There is that's what I learned about life that you always want to be where you are not, but you don't know how they live. You know, the last year I went there and I saw it with my eyes, and I'm like, you guys know that a lot of Russians dream of it, dream of going this place. And a lot, some Brazilians were like, what can be so cool here, you know? <laughs> you know, it's the place where you grow up at. Right. But I, I had a Brazilian friend who came over to Russia this year, this summer, and he was super impressed and really liked it. 
I was, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> He's like, no, 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 Moscow is so cool. It's so wide and big. And this is different, you know? That's, that's, that's interesting. I used to go, uh, I went a lot of places, and now I understand. I can say that Russia is interesting to see, you know? It's pretty friendly now. You can, like, everything is in English. You can find places. People speak English as well, you know? And it's nice to learn, like, communism and post-communist stuff and, like, this Orthodox Christians, the the churches we have are very nice, but they have their own style, you know? As, like, Notre Dame de Paris has its own style, but Russian churches have, like, with this onion tops, right? Golden onion tops. Right. I like that, though. Those golden onion tops are cool. They are different. It's as, uh, you know, the, like, original culture. This is what this is what I like about it. Like uh, I thought that Russia is when I used to be a kid, right? Like we're why we're so different, and um, I was so jealous that European Union they can how can someone be born like in Paris, <laughs> and I'm born in my city, right? <laughs> but then I realized that every place is good because it's it has its own you know originality. It has its own unique sense of being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Brazil, what I learned about Brazil is that not everything you see on TV is how it is in real life, right? They don't show you a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But, uh, okay, I, I was I was really threatened by people who told me, like, not, don't bring your phone, don't leave your Ray-Ban glasses at home, don't dress fancy, you know? That was kind of... You know, I didn't feel comfortable with that. We had to close our cars from inside so people won't steal stuff while we are inside of there. So they won't break in on the traffic lights. Wh- what the crazy. hell? Wait a minute, what? That's okay. So, <laughs> you, okay. you have so to, went, you have yeah, to, you have to lock the car while you're sitting in the car to make sure nobody breaks in the car while you're sitting yeah. in the car. Don't <laughs> listen to here. Here's the story. That, that seemed to be pretty crazy to me, too. But that's the story. I went to Salvador, and my friend lives there. And he said that his mom has two purses, right? One is a good one, and one is a fake and bad one. And the second one... Give me one second. Okay, and, and the second one, she used to hide in her trunk. So no one will steal it, the good one, right? Mm-hmm. And the second one was on the on the front seat, so she kind of has it. And if someone wants to break in or like pull the trigger at her, she'll be like, "Okay, okay, take my purse," you know. And he runs away. We used to sit in the car, and the guy told me like, "Close the windows, close the door." And whenever you're approaching a traffic light, you can actually see those kids who are running between cars, and you never know, you know. That's that's, an, that's crazy eye opening. I'm like, okay, now at least I understand that I feel pretty safe in Russia. You know, <laughs> maybe, we have, maybe we don't have some things, but that's actually good. <laughs> well, I think I think that every country you go to in the world, I think every every country has a ghetto, and every country has an area of the city where it's poor at. But I think yeah. the difference between the difference between the thing about Brazil, when you compare it to Russia, you compare it to the United States is, you know, it's a beautiful place to go to. You have beautiful people, great culture yeah. and all of that. But regardless, it still is in some sort of way a third world country. So when you have a third world country, you have people there sent the people growing up there in the ghettos there, the people growing up in poverty there. They're going to be a lot more desperate than a than a a person growing up in the ghetto in Russia is than a person growing up in the ghetto in the United States is. So that that kind of don't surprise me. I mean... So, well, I did know about this side, you know, but everything... I've seen a lot of beautiful things there, and I cried under Christ the Redeemer there, you know? I'm like, you don't know. People dream of it. <laughs> that was my dream. <laughs> I did. I did cry. Okay, I got. Tough. So okay, Russians okay. can cry. That's one stereotype that we've disproven. Russians can cry. Oh, we can cry. Yeah. And uh, you know what? Um, you guys used to ask me, right? Oh, show me some Russian song. But 
what I realized is that why Russian songs are what I like about them is lyrics, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are very like thoughtful. There is no such like fun songs. Most of them, okay, there are these stupid pop ones, which I'm not going to be proud to show you. Because <laughs> they're complete, you know, cello. And these ones are very thoughtful, but you guys are not going to understand because they're... <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's kind of confusing. It's going to be like, I'm going to be bobbing my head up and down to a song that I can't understand any of the lyrics to, just thinking, man, he's deep, man. Yeah, he, he's deep. Keeping in, keeping in mind that the the point is lyrics, actually. <laughs> is hip hop? Do they have Russian hip hop artists like a person rapping in Russian? Yeah, like Timothy. What's his name? Timothy. Yeah, he did some collaboration with Snoop Dogg and other people. Really? The only yeah, song I the, groove on. the only yeah. song I I know even remotely related to Russian culture is a song talking about um what's the name of that uh, you, you know who I'm talking about I'm trying to remember his name the guy who um what was his name da, 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 the Russian king let's see da, da. Ra- Rashputin Rashputin yeah that guy That's there's a song that sings about him <laughs> This was super old, my friend. Yeah. Rise up, Rasputin, we'll stand up the Russian uh-huh. king. That guy who really was dumb. I can't believe I wasn't even born at that time, I think. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, I don't have the lyrics, but I remember that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. 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 Yeah, that's what in the Russian kingdom, and he ended up sleeping with a lot of women under under the pretense that he was a a priest or something like that, and this was necessary. Which I don't know what religion it's necessary to sleep with a bunch of. I never actually asked you that. What is your religion, Lily? I'm Orthodox Christian. Oh right, right, right. Orthodox. That's the way my mom is, but my dad was kind of baptized as Muslim, but hmm. then he kind of turned out to be a atheist basically mm. like it means counting on himself as he says <laughs> <laughs> as he calls it but no but I'm Christian and that's just the way my mother made me basically but I'm good with that I mean I'm, I, I ain't gonna lie to you I mean sometimes I'm Christian sometimes I feel like I am Christian but sometimes I feel like I'm atheist sometimes because I don't know sometimes I just I feel I've you know, you have those moments where you're kind of in doubt. Yeah. Well, I'm not in doubt, but I do feel down sometimes. But what I would say... You can call me when you feel down, Lily. You're never alone. <laughs> Thank you. But it doesn't mean I have something against, I told you, right, about any any other religion. That's what... Hello? Jesus? against any other religion as well so I'm pretty tolerant especially traveling yeah especially since I've been traveling you know I mean I'm like I'm like you in that sense like we're not really we're not really against another religion it takes a lot of energy to hate (laughs) another person's religion like I don't I don't see the point of that especially like you why would you spend time on it man (laughs) Like the the problem with uh, the problem with huma- humanity as a whole is, it's okay. We don't understand that it's okay to be different. We focus on the smallest differences and wage wars that destroy countries because of that. The one thing I never liked about the conflict that exists between Christians and Islam and Muslims is, is more or less the same damn religion. Like more or less, it's the same religion. You got a few different names. It's written in a different language. Jesus isn't considered like the top prophet in the Quran. He's considered a prophet, but he's not considered like the top prophet. But it's the same concept. You have Adam and Eve. You have God. You have Jehovah. And another one is called Allah. You know what I mean? I will tell you even more. When I was a teenager, I opened Quran, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't read Arabic, but it was this book, the holy book that had this like Russian interpretation in the right side. And Mm -hmm. then I read some points of it. 
I'm like, this is nothing of uh, any principles, like against any principles that I have in Christianity. Mm -hmm. So there was eye-opening for me. I thought that, okay, they probably worshiping some other stuff you know but what he was saying like be an honest person and then respect god and you know all these principles so they, were, they had nothing um i would say like um wouldn't any questioning any of christian uh, principles as well you know it's the same it's the same thing treat others as you want to be treated Respect yeah. God and worship God. It's the same freaking message. And I'm always going to say the same thing I've been saying yeah, for message, years. That's what I would say, too. The message is the same. Message is the same. Stop focusing on who the messenger is. Just focus on, did you get the message? Did you understand the message? That's all that matters. I think most religions, most religions, whether it be Islam, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Judaism, hell, even if it be um, Hinduism, most of them have that same concept. Treat others fairly, respect your God, whoever he might be, and be an honorable person. That's it. Half of that you can really do by yourself, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but sometimes that people get completely lost, right? And they don't know who to ask the help from. That's true. You don't know who is right, who is wrong, and then it's easier for you to go to church since you kind of been thought by your parents like that. I mean, I, I will say, um, you remember Bernardo, um, Bernardo de Hibero? Yeah. We were talking about um, religion. He said, I will say this. He said, I don't know if I totally believe in God. He said, but I do But I do feel that when I do pray to God, I feel a lot better. He said, I've never got like a mystic message from God, like this is what you're supposed to do. But I do feel that when I pray, I do feel a lot better. So sometimes it's just good just to feel like you have somebody listening. Sometimes but you know what? That prayers get you to, they give you hope, and mm -hmm. then they give you all concentration on what you really want. I didn't tell you that that once I sat down and wrote this on this like Starbucks napkins. What do I really want? <laughs> like your dream and your goals. My like. Okay, know, I'm a, can I can I try to guess? Can I try to guess your goals? I don't know about was that goals or not. Yeah, it was like, what do I really want in life? Because it turned out that I never asked myself crystal clearly, you know. Mm. You, you know what? I've actually done that before. I've actually done that before. I, I did that for the first time January of this year. And actually, not that long time ago as well. I did that uh, like la two summers ago. Really? Yeah. Damn, we're we're going through our self, we're going through transformations together. But but I remember when I did it, um you know, I didn't under I don't know what it is about all I can tell you is and I'll tell the who's ever listened to this podcast to this when you write some when you write do, do that, because I'm gonna tell you right now, when you're going through your day to day life and you're asking yourself, Should I do this, should I do that, should I do this, should I do that? There's going to be, you're always, the answer that's going to come back to you and your own self is going to be mixed with fear, it's going to be mixed with expectations, it's going to be mixed with lust or whatever, whatnot. It's something about taking the time to write down on a piece of paper about asking yourself a question, asking yourself, do you want this? Asking yourself how you feel about that. That's the best way to get in touch with your intuition. That's the best way to get in touch of what you really want in life, what really makes you feel comfortable. And I, and I really can't tell you why it works so well. Like, because like you have such a mess with your thoughts, right? But when you start writing it down, as you do in the like, classes, as you do in your cases that you get in, I don't know, in any classes, you start to break the situation down and whatever happened, what's the reason, what's the outcome, that all comes to logics. It does, because a lot of things, when you look at them from the perspective, right? It always seems to be so harder when you are the person who has the trouble than someone else. Why we give such precious advices to our friends and we can never help ourselves, right? It's because we can't, we can't be in the perspective and see from the side. Okay, you gotta let it go or something like this, right? Because you don't see, you don't, you don't take it cold-minded. But when you start writing it down, you start feeling that 
it's kind of not about you. That's what I feel like, okay, this is like the case that I'm solving. There is some person who has this question, who has like this question to ask, the problem to solve and to choice to make, right? That's how it works for me. That's how, that's how it worked, basically. You know, how, how it worked for me was kind of similar to your situation. I think we kind of walked that same line as where you just want to ask yourself, you know, what should I do? How do I solve this issue? But the main issue I had with it, I was trying to figure out, you know, what was my life purpose in life? I was trying to figure out, you know, that whole, you, you probably think about this too sometimes, like, why am I on this earth? What am I supposed to be doing? And there were, I had read this thing on the internet where they said that when you do that, when you write down on a piece of paper and you ask yourself questions, it said to keep writing. He you said, yourself is always going to tell you the truth. He said, but to, if you really want to find out your life purpose, keep writing, keep writing something until you start crying. He said, like, keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. he said, like, do, he said, like, do like my purpose is to be this. My purpose is to be that. He said, when you write down the thing that makes you start crying, he said, that's, that's when you know you found your purpose. Wow. That's crazy. And I, and I did it and I, I thought it was, I thought it was just retarded, but you know, I tried it and <laughs> no, nah, I'm serious. I tried it and it worked. I wrote down 24 things. I got to number 25 and I just started crying. I still just I was just sitting. I was doing security at this one place. I was just sitting in the car, just crying. But tell me, but tell me, why do why do people start crying? I started crying as well, but I don't understand because you know what? Because it gets so much inside of your very conserved places inside of your soul, right? The questions you ask are right at the point, right inside. You know where you don't let other people inside, and you ask yourself these questions you never asked and you feel like someone is like invading your personal space that's what i feel like this is the things are getting way too personal that you are even scared to answer them to yourself because you never did i i, I started i can tell you i started crying because i just never i just never realized i just never realized i just never realized how much how I really I never realized how much I had hidden from myself about a lot of the things that I did. I I never realized how much stuff I was doing that wasn't making me happy, but I was okay. still doing it. I, I never realized. And then it was just some things that just was like, like, I was like, man, like when I like just to give you an example from my perspective, just to be honest, okay. um, the when I'm doing the podcast and stuff, and I'm doing the part, I do podcasts, I do YouTube videos, I do stand up comedy stuff like that. The reason why I do it, I do it every single day. I try to do at least ten videos a day. I try to do at least two podcasts a day. And the reason why I started doing it was because I had that moment where I was writing down on pieces of paper, like mm-hmm. what am I supposed to do? And it's just because it just it just became so clear to me. It was like I was like, man, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Why are you? Why are you Why are you working at a job you hate? Because at this time I was working at a job that I hated. I'm thirty thousand dollars in debt from ASU. Um, I had no degree. I just was depressed. I just I was at that point where I was even having like you know suicidal thoughts. Cause I was just like I have nothing. I don't feel like I have anything to live for. And oh. it felt it helped me find a purpose because I was like, man, like this is what I love to do. Like I love to entertain people. I love to so talk to people. Know, which exactly? Which exactly point is? Out of your list is like making podcast podcasts and what? YouTube. What? How is this point called? When it when I got to the point, it went. It was in two ways. When I got to the when I got to the point of figuring out what my purpose in life. Because one thing they one thing the guy said on the uh, on the article I read was true. Your purpose in life is rarely ever attached to a certain career, but what happens is is you got you find a way to express succeeding your purpose. Okay. My purpose in life, when I was writing it down, I'll tell everybody was, I wanted to achieve mass respect. I wanted to be respected. I wanted, but I wanted to be respected in a way where I was doing something that I loved. You know, I, I got, I spent my whole life. You know, I used to do the most menial jobs. I fuck, I, I used to clean shit out of sewers for money. I used to work as a cook help at a at a prison. Like I, I've I've always done jobs I just hated just to try to get by in life, and I. Okay. It made and it made me it made me sad because I was like man like I, I haven't done that so then I started narrowing down stuff about then I started asking myself what career and how I judge that 
how I judged that was what made me cry, but also where I felt the most emotional attachment to. You know, when I when I wrote down security, it was like hell. I don't. It just was nothing. Like it felt empty. Like when I wrote down, am I? Do I want to be security for the rest of my life? It said no. That's not like you. When you do it like that, when you write down. It gets more clear to you. It gets more clear. Like, if you write down, do I, like, do it like, a, I'll, I'll tell you the response, how the responses and the questions were. I wrote down, do I want to be a security guard? I, the response I received was no. And I put why. And I said, well, I said, it sounds crazy as hell. I know. I apologize. But I said, because that isn't, you, you hate the job. You don't want to be there. You're depressed. You don't want to be that job. So now I was like, do I want to be some, do I want to be entertained? I said, yes. I said, why? Because that's the field that you feel most comfortable and that's what you do naturally. Mm-hmm. When you're at ASU and you're talking to people, that's what made you feel alive. Yeah, yeah. So I started, I said, okay, I want to do podcasts. And I was like, yes. Why? Because you want to talk to people on a mass level. You know, when I'm doing the one thing I like about doing podcasts and love about doing YouTube videos, the thing I love about doing stand up comedy is I love the fact that I'm able to, inter- to interact with even though it's not to the point, even though I'm, I ain't going to lie to you, my podcast ain't to the point where I'm talking to millions of people. I'm aiming for that point to where I'm like a, a Ryan Seacrest or I'm like a Howard Stern or where I'm like a Nick Cannon where everybody's just tuning in every day to see me. And that's very nice. And I, I just, I go after that with every bone in my fiber. And that's, but that, once again, that's just my life path. You know, there was one guy who... um one thing I learned. One thing I learned about pursuing my dream. Am I boring you right now? By the way, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Okay. One thing I've learned about. Um, one thing I learned about pursuing my dream and pursuing my goals is mm-hmm. we all have different paths that we walk, and sometimes it'll be parallel. To, sometimes it'll be the same as somebody else, and sometimes it'll be far different. You know, like. That was one thing that made me so insecure about trying to do what I did because there's a, most people who are successful in what I did, what I'm trying to do, they started while they were in college. You know, I just started this two years ago when I got kicked out of ASU, but mm-hmm. they started this while they were in college. Even like a Ryan Seacrest, Ryan, you know, Ryan, you know, Ryan Seacrest is Ryan Seacrest started doing his old entertainment thing when he was 13 years old. Howard Stern started when he was 17 years old. Nick Cannon started when he was 14 years old. Will Smith started when he was 16 years old. So, that was insecurity I had in myself. It was like, damn it, I'm, I'm 23. I'm too old to start doing this. Like, yes, that's what that's what happens. That you feel like, oh, what oh what I had is that whatever I was trying to do, there was always someone who does this better than me, and it had put me down so much that I'm like, I can never do better than her or him, you know. But like, how am I any better? Why am I even gonna start? If, uh, but then, you know, you can always try. You should always be better than yourself yesterday. And whatever makes you happy, you will find a way to earn with it for a living, you know. That's true. And that, that's one thing. That was That's one thing I thought I have, too, is compare myself to other people and yeah. being like, man, there's so much better me and there's so much better than me in this field. There's so much this and that. But how I how I... How I kind of deal with that insecurity is, is, well, I think the way I dealt with it is, is at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there was a point, I think, I think, I think, I don't know, it's kind of, it's hard to say this in a proper way, so I'm just going to say it, point, point out blank. Not everybody was born a great, a great master or something. Mm-hmm. You know, it just is what it is. Not everybody was born great at something. What matter of fact, there was one time I was doing this podcast and I was talking about talents and gifts and stuff like that. And have you ever, they might have this quote in Russia where they say hard work and beats talent when talent isn't hard working. Yeah. And I said that the reason that that's true is because people don't understand what a talent is. All a talent is, in essence, even though it's a great thing, it's a boost ahead of other people in a certain area. Now, the catch is, whatever you do with that boost is up to you, but you you can't survive just off of the boost. That's like if you're trying to climb a ladder and somebody else is trying to climb a ladder with you at the same time. If somebody boosts them a few okay. steps up the ladder, even though they'll be a steps higher than you in the beginning, 
they can't keep that same pace up if they don't work hard to get all the way to the top. So you could beat them just by going faster. It's the same thing with it's the same thing with getting better or something. I can't tell you how many people I know in my life who who were who were shit who are who were just shit. I mean terrible. I mean I'm telling them, bro, maybe you shouldn't do this. But in a year or so, or if you know, because I'm honest with people, or in a year or so, yeah. I, I remember, I remember, man, I got a little brother, right? Uh-huh. Named Jam- little brother named uh-huh. Jamar. I'm still here. Yeah. I mean, prime example is I got a little brother named Jamar. Really great guy. Really good kid. You know, I hate him sometimes. Sometimes I love him. And yep. I remember in 2010, he decided he wanted to be a rapper, and so yeah. he started putting these rap videos up and. They were just terrible. I mean, oh, Lily, man. when I tell you they were terrible, Lily, they were terrible. And I, but but you know what I kept telling them? I kept telling them, you know what, man, just hone your craft, keep getting better, man. You're gonna get better. You're gonna get better, man. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know what the fuck happened in between the eight months that he, after I told him that. He, he 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 hit me. He, he was like, "Bro, I got this track. I just I want you to hear how I rap." I was like, "Okay, cool. Let me hear you." Man, he started rapping. I was like, "God damn, he's good now." What happened? Like, did he? I was like, "Did he sign a? Did he sign a deal with the devil? What happened?" I got. He showed me the track. I was so blown away. I I, I called him again and told him to rap on the phone with me right now, just to make sure that was him. I couldn't believe it was him for nothing in the world. I was like, what the fuck? So, so, you know, so we that's all, a nice story, huh? That's, yeah. that's very nice. He's evolving like that. So, I mean, more of the story is, is you know, we, I guess to sum, to, to uh, sum up my 10 minute uh, rant about my life was, I believe it's really important to find your purpose in life. I really feel it's really important to find a thing that makes you happy. And I know it's kind of, it's kind of idealistic to say that the thing that makes you the most happy is going to be attached to a career. That sounds crazy, but at the same time, I believe that with my whole heart and soul that that's true. Yeah, I I believe it's true. I believe it's true. There's a but me- you know what I am practicing lately is trying new things, and trying new things is actually hard because you come and do like some classes, right? And you feel like complete shit because, <laughs> you, can, because you can't do anything. I know that feel feeling. Like- yeah, because you'd be like, okay, I'm supposed to be a cool girl, and I'm the worst here. Yeah, like, <laughs> and then you get, you're like, wait, it's, it's, you're not used to being this position, you're being like the worst in the room and stuff. But one moment, it feels hard, you're like almost crying, but it means like you're breaking the stick, you know? It means like you're learning something new, you're getting actually better. If you're going there... And not learning anything, you don't feel bad, you don't feel tough or anything, you know? You don't feel anything. You're like, okay, the class is nice. But when you feel really bad, it means you're actually learning something. That's how I started, like, how I started to do, well, I tried to do surfing, right? I was so mad at this board. (laughs) The board was like two times higher than me I'm, I'm like why is it so long and I can't handle it and it's very heavy and I have to go all the way back and forth and I never tried it I, I am from the country that doesn't even have an ocean <laughs> you know? we don't even have beaches you know? <laughs> exactly so uh, but the moment that I was actually getting better at it is when I learned something right <laughs> so uh, be, getting better is what you have talent for is one thing, right? And I feel like you're completely guilty when you have a some talent for something and you're not working on it. Of course, JT, that uh, there are some things that people see that you're talented at, right? Mm-hmm. But you're good with talking to people. You're good with int- good with not having any prejudice about people and thinking first before your tongue comes out right and you're you're nice with being direct about some topics but then oh you also need to evolve that you need to watch the special things you need to read some literature on it you know i think that i'm good at like i'm like naturally good at some management i would say but now i'm reading some books and i'm getting better i actually have some theory behind it now and i know how okay 
I did know this by intuition, but I actually know how to do it to be more professional now. You know what I mean? No, that that's real. That's that's the key. Yeah, one thing, but you you're gonna be guilty for not evolving it as well. You know. That's true. That's the. This means that you're better than me. You you will need to work less hard than me to like to get to your goal. But if I work hard without having your talent, <laughs> if I work harder than you, I can still do it. You know. Hmm. No, that's real. You know, and man, I tried. I just know so many people who were so talented, man, but they wasted it. They wasted it because they weren't hard work, and they wasted it because they didn't have the work ethic to go after what they wanted to. You know, you know, I have a, you still there? Yeah. You know, I have a cousin, you know, really tell, he was so, he would, she's 20 years old. He was, he used to play football in high school, the American version, and he was so talented, but he just, he just wasn't hard work and he just wouldn't improve on his craft. And I remember his father, we, when he, he was, you know, in our, you know, our high school years go from 14 to 18 years old. That's when you're in high yeah. school here. And I remember when he was 12 years, no, 12, 13. I remember he was 13 years old. Me, him and his father were sitting in the room and his father was telling him about, you know, his ability in football. And he told him something that was so real. He said, that natural talent that you have in football is only going to help you until you're about 16. Okay. After that, after that, you're going to be on your yeah. own. He said, yeah. if you don't start working hard, you're going to be on your own. It's not nothing else is going to help you. And sure enough, he was right. And now okay. he's and now you're he's in not this. Going forward means you're going back, unfortunately. Right. Standing at the same point means actually you're going back. Right. And, and now he's in the point now where he's kind of depressed in life. You know, he. He would he 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 dreams about going to college and playing football and stuff like that. But it's like, man, you know, you didn't put the work at the gym. And he's not that he, he's twenty years old, so it's not that he's too old to go to college. But he just he does he he doesn't work hard at things. But then I also got a theory. But but then I also got a theory where I feel like I think that most people are destined to work in areas where the work ethic comes the most natural to them. Where they, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's like for me. Like when you went in the area where you don't, where you just naturally don't mind working the hardest at. Like it's just something about you. Just you're like, oh, fuck, I, this is work. This is work. This ain't work to me. You know, that's that's the area I think where most people belong to. Yeah, it means that you're in your in your spot. Right. That's like your place to work when you don't make any effort. Yeah, and so I don't know. And plus. No, that's I'm always you know I, I, we could talk about this for ages because I, I love I love stuff like that like I love finding I love the aspect of finding the thing like what you're built to do or what you love to do the most or the thing that makes you shine a thing that you feel the most passionate or attached to like it was interesting. I had this lady asking um, conversation as well, and then she told me her eye opening thing that. Whatever question you have about the previous topic we talked, right? That whatever questions you have, you already have answers inside of yourself. Mm-hmm. You just you just don't know that. You mm-hmm. just never analyze that. Whenever you have, just ask yourself. It's just you know what we start to do, right? We start asking friends. We start asking people who have no idea about your situation, about your living, and everything. You because. Don't have- and right? the, and the thing like about it is, they don't understand you. They don't know what it's like to be you. They don't understand you can't see something the way that they see it because you have a you you're your own person in a way. You have your own reaction to something that's different to them. When you've been yourself since you are zero years old, right? Who right. knows yourself better than you? Then just ask yourself: Do you really like it? Okay, if you don't, like, what's the next step? What you what you want to be? Mm-hmm. Who, who's going to answer this question? You're going to go to what to ask that? Who do you want to be? Mom, dad, who am I want to be? <laughs> you know? You ask yourself. That's that's how it works. But yeah. that's the thing. That's the true thing. That it's hard to be honest with yourself. I have to be honest with myself that I'm lazy. That's <laughs> what I realized lately. That's true. This is, But this is a, such a bad thing. I can't make myself do a lot of things that I kind of should do, you know? Yeah. Because they, when there are deadlines, I'm closing them. But if there is no deadlines, I'm not 
I'm not doing anything. That's that's like my problem, and I have to deal with it. But everyone has to determine their own problem, and like always keep it in mind when you feel like not doing anything. Like, okay, this is your like like addict time, right? <laughs> some people are addicted to like alcohol, and some people are addicted to being lazy. You know, not doing anything, not making decisions, and leaving the life like where the river goes. I'm just gonna keep it flow that's true i think sometimes it's so it's so easy to it's so easy to follow the path that's already there rather than building a new one for yourself straight up to hell (laughs) when you're not doing anything you know where you're heading man i yes it's deep (laughs) (laughs) this is like it's like no i'm sorry that's one problem i have in this uh, that's what i've read recently that a person needs to have like a uh, what is that annulation when you go to like a zero point you need to annul everything you had you need to stay quiet and not concentrate on anything and let things go for some time there are some moments when you are like being dense about some things and sometimes that you need to let things go it's either like sleep or vacation or any other sorts of things when you need to get a way to get back at it being fresh you know right that's real gotta go zero to a hundred real quick yes 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 and a hundred you need to drop it (laughs) you need to drop it and think about some other stuff relax yeah that's real that's I love how every time I have somebody on this podcast we end up having a, a deep philosophical conversation are you having like your notebook with all the thoughts? <laughs> well, so far I'm on notebook. All I have written down is um, to smile. To smile when you to smile for no reason means you're a fool. Oh, that's a bad thing. That that's the only thing you wrote about the conversation. <laughs> well, I'll put it like this. I've been smiling this whole. I've been smiling this whole podcast with you. So I guess I'm a fool today. Um, <laughs> but I actually have to. I want to keep you on a. Um, to lie to talk to you a little bit more, but I actually have to close the podcast down because we're running on our last hour. But it was a it was a pleasure talking to Lily. Lily, if you have anything to say to my listeners before you're gone, what would you like to tell them? Oh, I would like to say that I feel like the greatest thing in this world is stay positive and stay uh, truly a person, you know, so to be a human being to everyone around and to always feel that whatever you do is for good. For good reasons and just do it and be a nice person and everyone will be I'm, I'm completely feeling that the person the world around is about positive vibes and we are the ones who make it positive not 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 anyone else <laughs> so please well, if i see you tomorrow on the streets please smile back <laughs> <laughs> and spread spread this positive people vibe everywhere around so that's my message for today I, I like how you just assume that I might have fans in Russia that will see you on the street. That's cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, but with that being said, I want, I want to thank Lily for coming on. Really great person. Really great soul. You know, that's that's she's one. She's she's a true representation of why I have the People's Paradise podcast. Is I have it as a podcast to bring people from all around the world, from all walks of life, whether they be different gender types, whether they be different loves, whatever whatever style of living to come here and have the conversation. That's true. So I I love that. So with that being said, this has been the People's Paradise Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you tune in tonight. I have the second half of the interview I have with uh, Jessica. And also, I'll be here tomorrow morning at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And also, I'm putting the next episode out at 9 p.m. tomorrow.